hey, let's do some Friday paper questions that I wasn't able to teach this week because of clear sight. I'm going to start. This is Friday paper seven, which is due October 2nd. Um, number 14 is a question that um, requires us to use order of operations. So let me get a pin here. Okay, so for this problem, I'm first going to look in the parentheses. PEMDAS, right? And in those parentheses, I have 3 minus 2, which is 1 to the fourth power times 2. Okay, now I have to evaluate this exponent, PE. So 12 minus 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is 1 times 2. I am not going to say 12 minus 1 is 11 times 2 is 22. That would be my favorite wrong answer. Instead, we have to multiply before we subtract. So 12 minus, what is 1 times 2? Two? 2. So it is 12 minus 2, and my answer is 10. This is the work I'd like to see on your paper when it says show your work. Okay, number 15. 26 divided by what's in parentheses. Let's go ahead and evaluate that. 3 minus 1 is 2 times 5 minus 3. Okay, order of operations. PEMDAS sounds like I always multiply before I divide, but I don't. When I have multiplication and division, they're on the same level. So I'm going to do whichever comes first, left to right. So that is division. 26 divided by 2 is 13 times 5 minus 3. That's our new problem. Okay, this is an expression. It's a numerical expression, and we're evaluating it. So now I have multiplication and subtraction. So order of operations says we multiplied first. 13 times 5. I like to see these little things on your paper. That tells me that you're actually doing these problems, not copying off of your neighbor, um, not using a calculator. 65 minus 3. 65, 64, 63, 62. That's my answer for number 15, and here's the answer for 14. Let's continue. 144, okay, divide that by, let's go ahead and evaluate that um, exponent. 4 squared is not 8. What is it? Yep, 16 minus 13 plus a negative 16. Now, divide, subtract, add. Let's divide. 144 divided by 16. And uh, we have talked about this one in class, in some of my classes, but um, I would have to guesstimate how many times 16 goes into 144. And I'm going to tell you it comes out evenly, right? It's not um, something we think about. It's not like a fact that we have memorized. But I know I have to multiply that 6 times something right here that's going to give me a 4 in the product. So 6 times 4... We could put a 4 here, and that'd put a 2, so then it'd be 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1 is 6, 64. It's not big enough. So let's think of another um, Cox, do you have factor that I can multiply that 6 by to get a 4. Not 3, not 4, not 5, not 6, not 7, not 8, but 9, right? So 6 times 9 is 54. That's a tough fact. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 5 is 14. So 144 divided by 16 is 9 minus 13. Adding a negative is the same as subtracting, so I'm just going to do that. 9 minus 13. I have 9 apples. I owe you 13. I'm going to give you all of my 9, but I'm still going to owe you 4, right? Negative 4 minus 16 is saying I'm on the number line at negative 4 and I need to go to the left, that's what subtraction tells me, 16. I'm going to end up at negative 20, all right? Let's do number 17. This is fraction addition. These are not fractions. They are mixed numbers. Um, I am going to encourage you not to make them um, improper. Again, I feel like it's when we have negative fractions, uh, negative mixed numbers, it's easier for me to make them improper, but we don't have any negatives, so let's just leave these, so we don't end up with these big numbers for no reason at all. 
let's make them um, um, common denominator. So I'm going to leave my whole numbers alone, plus, and leave my 1 alone. Vinculum, vinculum. 3 and 7, what is the least common denominator? They're both prime, okay, 3 and 7. So we're going to multiply those together, and we're going to get 21. 3 times 7 is 21, so I need to multiply this times 7, which is 14. Sorry about that little squiggle. Uh, 7 times 3 is 21. 1 times 3 is 3. Now let's add. 4 plus 1 is 5. 14 plus 3, 17, 21. If you have a gigantic mm, improper fraction, then uh, it um, is okay, but this, I think, is probably a more efficient way to do that problem. Okay, number 18 was requested, so let's go ahead and leave these as uh, mixed numbers. And uh, I'm going to leave my whole numbers alone, okay? And I'm going to get a common denominator. Remember, when we're adding or subtracting, subtracting, we need a common denominator. 7 and 6 are only one number apart. So I know they don't share any factors um, greater than, or sorry, I'm talking about multiples here. So um, I need to multiply them in order to get the least common multiple or the least common denominator. So I get 42, 42. 7 times 6 was 42. 5 times 6 is 30. We're creating equivalent ratios here. 6 times 7 is 42, 1 times 7 is 7. So let's go ahead and subtract the whole numbers. 16 minus 2 is 14. 30 minus 7, 30 minus 5 is 25. 24, 23, 14, and 23, 40 seconds. Now 23 is prime, so it has no factors other than itself and 1. And 42 is not divisible by 23, so that's my final answer, simplified. Okay, multiplying uh, fractions and mixed numbers in number 19. 16 is not a fraction. Let's make it a fraction. Um, we could have used other ways to make that a 16. Um, 32 over 2 would also work, but this is going to keep it easy. Um, sorry times. It's supposed to be a multiplication problem. Let's make this mixed number improper. So we do 8 times 2 plus 1. Remember it goes around like this. 8 times 2 is 16 plus 1 is 17 over 8. Now I'm going to make it easier on myself. 16 and 8 have common factor. They have a 2 in common. They have a 4 in common, but they also have an 8 in common. If I use the greatest common factor, it's going to go faster. 8 divided by 8 is 1, 16 divided by 8 is 2. 17 and 1 have no factors in common other than 1. So 2 times 17, if you need to, do it off on the side. I love to see these because it means you're working them out. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. 34, maybe you could do that one in your head, over 1, correct? 1 times 1 is 1. So my answer to number 19 is a straight up 34. Okay, let's do this last problem here. 2 thirds divided by 1 and 1 sixth. Again, there's multiple ways to do this. You can get a common denominator. I'm going to show this because you don't usually see it. 1 times 6 is 6 plus 1 is 7. I just made this. Um, Sorry, divided by, I made it an improper fraction. 6 plus 1 is 7 sixths. Now, we are going to go back and do the keep change flip, which is the algorithm that most of you remember. But remember, we can also get a common denominator here. Okay, so 6 and 3, the common denominator is 6. 3 times 2 is 6, so 2 times 2 is 4 divided by 7 6. So now this is where it gets a little confusing. We're saying 4 divided by 7 here, correct? 4 6 divided by 7 6. We're trying to find out how many times 7 6 goes into 4 6. Is it going to go in one time? No. 
it's going to go in. It It's bigger, right? Seven sixths is bigger than four sixths. So it's, um, let's see what it would be. Hmm. Since these are common, we can actually just make this 4 divided by 7. And another way of writing that is 4 divided by 7, right? Okay, let's do the keep change flip. See if we get the same thing. 2 thirds times, and then let's go ahead and we're going to flip this second fraction. Okay, that's the keep change, and then we flip 6 over 7. Okay, 3 and 6 have a common factor. It is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and 1 times 7 is 7. See? There's more than one way to skin a cat, but I suggest highly that you do not skin a cat. I had to do that once in anatomy and physiology. It was stinky, and it was sad. Have a great day.